Welcome to this session about preparing for FMEA projects. In this session, we will discuss a set of one-time preparation tasks and a set of preparation tasks that you will need to do for each FMEA. You will want to complete the nine tasks shown here as preparation for doing your FMEAs. These tasks only need to be done once, but they have an important impact on the success of your FMEA program. You can do FMEAs using Excel spreadsheets, but the spreadsheets have significant shortcomings compared with commercially available software packages. You will want to use a selection matrix like the one shown here to aid in your decision-making process. The top section of the matrix contains a list of the minimum requirements the software should meet. Any software unable to meet the minimum requirements should be eliminated. The wants section of the matrix describes what you would like the software to do. These wants should be rated on a combination of the level of desire for the want and how well the software meets those wants. You can weigh the desires on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest weight. You then grade each software package for how well it meets the desire. Multiply the weight times the rating to get a weighted score for each one. Sum up the weighted rankings. The package with the highest score should be the one chosen. Make sure this matrix is built before you look at any software packages to help eliminate any biases that might creep in from already having a favorite package. A good software package will have most of the features shown here. Compliance with applicable standards may be important depending on your work environment. Isograph software complies with a wide variety of international FMEA and FMECA standards. You will need to develop a set of ranking scales for your analyses. Typical rankings are 1 to 10, with 1 being the lowest rank. Many organizations have rankings for the severity of consequences and event occurrence developed for their risk management programs. Make sure the tables you create for your FMEAs and FMECAs have similar rankings to those your organization already uses. You will need to develop a ranking table for how easy the failure is to detect. Failure modes with low detectability are frequently accompanied by high severity of consequences. Be careful here. You will need to have a treatment plan for these items regardless of the frequency of occurrence. The columns in your worksheets should convey the information you need to provide as your study output. Try not to put more than the minimum number you need to give others a clear understanding of your findings. Everyone involved in your FMEA program needs to understand their roles, goals, responsibilities, and accountabilities. A RACI matrix is a good tool for conveying them to your organization. Remember, these assignments will require negotiation, especially if the roles cross organizational boundaries. Anyone who participates in FMEAs or FMECAs will need some level of training. All team members should get the basics about what FMEAs are about. Facilitators will need basic FMEA training and training about how to be a good facilitator. Cutting corners on training will likely lead to poorly done FMEAs and a lack of implementation of the controls. Remember, FMEA documents are legal evidence, especially for safety and environmental concerns. Make sure the information you put in them is as accurate as possible. Make sure you use qualifying terms when discussing potential failures and consequences. Avoid using absolute terms and make sure that safety or environmental issues receive the highest priority regardless of total RPN or criticality. Do not scrimp on where and when you have FMEA meetings. It is best to have a comfortable, well-lit room that is large enough to accommodate the number of people you expect to participate. A projector or large video screen is a must so that participants can easily follow the analysis. Try to schedule the meetings away from their typical workplace, but near enough so visits to the site are quickly done. 
The hierarchy in the analysis should follow either the system or process hierarchy. Good FMEA software will roll the total RPN or criticality from the bottom of the hierarchy to the top level. Using a work breakdown structure to create the process hierarchy is a good practice. There are lots of sources for failure data. The best data will come from local experience. Public databases may be used if local data is insufficient. Sometimes there is no choice other than to use a public database. Make sure you understand the limitations of those databases when you use them, and make sure to cite those limitations in your final report. Every project will have its own scope, system description, ground rules and assumptions, and information sources. Setting the scope for the project determines how long the project will take, which items in the system will be reviewed, and who will be needed for the analysis. It is an essential step in the process. Describing the system and its functions takes lots of effort. There are multiple diagrams that can help make sure everyone involved clearly understands the system being analyzed. We will use this ethylene oxide production system as an example. Keep in mind, this is a very simplified example. You can think of a system as a set of functional blocks designed to work together to produce its final product. Creating a functional block diagram based on the system's process flow diagram is an important first step for understanding how the system is put together to perform its overall function. Each functional block has some output used as an input by some other functional block. Failures within the functional block lead to variation in their output, and those variations lead to variation in the overall output of the system. Make sure you take adequate time to understand each functional block and its outputs. Variations in these functional outputs will be functional failures within the system. The FMEA block diagram is another important tool for understanding the system being analyzed. It shows the boundary of the FMEA project. It clearly depicts the interfaces, physical connections, material transfers, data transfers, energy transfers, and the system inputs and outputs. The interface matrix is supplemental to the FMEA block diagram. It shows the interfaces between the components of the system and shows whether the interface must be or must not be present for the system to work properly. The P diagram depicts the controllable input signals of the system. It describes the required energy sources, any control factors, and these are things that can be changed in the design. It also depicts part or component factors such as stiffness or hardness. It depicts uncontrollable inputs or noise factors. These are outside forces that can influence the design and are not under control of the design team. These include piece-to-piece -piece variation in the parts, environmental conditions that the system will be, uh, see, how the customer will use the system, changes to the system over time, and the system's interaction with other systems. It depicts error states or undesirable outputs, and these undesirable outputs could be called potential failure modes. There are things like uh, excess gases or excess heat, vibration, leakage, and the like. And it depicts the ideal response from the system. And this is the primary functional output desired. The last preparatory step is gathering information and documentation. Make sure you gather enough information to ensure project success. Remember, the analysis is only as good as the quality of data used to create it. Thank you for attending this webinar. For more information, visit www.isograph.com or contact Brett Peterson at bpeterson at isograph.com or you can phone him at plus one eight zero one six one zero 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 four five.